the way um, we believe uh, we can achieve this. So um, there's a series of recommendations, as I say. Uh, the one which we believe will have more impact than anything else is uh, a rollout of a national lung cancer screening program across all four nations in the UK. We know that the best chance of curing lung cancer is to catch it at its earliest stages, stage one and stage two, when it's treatable by either surgery or radical radiotherapy. And the best way of uh, detecting early stage lung cancer in patients who are often uh, have no symptoms is through CT screening. And a number of um, big studies now, the NLST study in the United States and the more recently published Nelson study, um, and also the UK lung cancer screening study and a number of others in Europe have shown uh, an improvement in survival. Um, so uh, NHS England has recently started something called the Lung Health Check Programme, which is a number of lung health checks uh, in areas uh, across England uh, as a sort of feasibility pilot study uh, to look at um, implementation. Uh, those are going well and in fact are being expanded uh, but what we're saying is we'd like that to go even further and we'd like the National Screening Committee to uh, formally recommend the rollout of a um, uh, lung cancer screening uh, program across all four nations. Linked to that, uh, we are also um, very conscious that uh, raising awareness is a vital thing. So we're, uh, asked, or we're calling for um, the regular... Um, running of uh, awareness campaigns. Now, these are done um, to some extent already um, intermittently, uh, but we need, you know, regional and national campaigns run regularly. We're also aware, um, again, with the pressures on primary care at the moment and the health service as a whole, that there are many people probably at home concerned about symptoms that either they or their loved ones have. And therefore, we believe the setup of a telephone helpline uh, where people could contact um, and say, you know, I'm concerned about these symptoms or my you know, husband or wife with these symptoms, what should I do? Um, and, you know, getting people forward um, into primary or secondary care for investigations. So those are three of the uh, main recommendations. In addition to that, a number of other recommendations um, where we know that in addition to uh, surgery, as I said, radiotherapy can be used with curative intent for early stage lung cancer and stereotactic ablative radiotherapy or SABA is very good for people who either don't want to have surgery or, or who are not fit enough to have surgical resection. Um, Sabre is now uh, operating in a number of sites across uh, the UK, uh, but we need, a, a, again, a, a bigger rollout um, and more centres able to offer Sabre. Thinking about patients who do present with advanced disease, um, we know that the molecularly targeted therapies and immunotherapy are beginning to make a big impact on, for, for some patients with advanced disease and uh, significantly prolonging their lives. And we need to um, have a mechanism whereby uh, review of new targeted therapies happens more quickly and that they get into guidelines more quickly and get out into clinical practice more quickly. And we need to uh, monitor the impact that immunotherapy is having, because I think we're, we're moving into a new paradigm almost that for some patients who would have previously had treat, uh, systemic treatment for advanced disease uh, and might have survived for a number of months um, before sadly they died, they're actually with these new treatments uh, being kept uh, well for many, many months and rolling into years. So we're almost seeing some patients who are living with lung cancer for now long periods of time. And as I say, it's almost becoming a chronic disease. Uh, as well as those recommendations, we're saying that, you know, things like the workforce is extremely important. Our whole of our workforce across the NHS is very stretched at the moment. Um, and there are shortages in the workforce as well. And we have to look to the future as we expand things. Um, and across the all uh, aspects of the multidisciplinary team, we need to see uh, improvements in the workforce and um, 
more people uh, going into cancer medicine and, and uh, looking after patients with lung cancer. Um, we've got to make sure that that people do the right tasks so that at the moment you often find in multidisciplinary teams that, you know, you've got highly trained specialist nurses who are doing um, other tasks, which, you know, are ne very important and necessary, but w for which they are not so well trained, administrative and clerical tasks, uh, which actually are much better done by administrative and clerical uh, personnel who, who are specialized in those areas. Um, so getting the right people doing the right tasks. Um, and then, as I said, getting uh, more specialist nurses, more doctors, oncologists, radiologists, pathologists, and so on in the field of lung cancer uh, coming in. But again, this is a, a common problem across many cancers and many areas. Um, and also, um, you know, around all this, as I've said, uh, access to real-time data. So historically, uh, we have always had data which is two or three years out of date. But in order to be responsive and see what is actually happening on the ground, we need to uh, have nearer real-time data so we can monitor um, how things are going in the management of patients with lung cancer. And, th and therefore, we can adjust things uh, and hopefully improve things. So these are the um, main areas of recommendations. But um, I you know, uh, suggest and highly recommend to people that they read the UK Lung Cancer Coalition's route back to 25 by 25 report um, to see why we've uh, why we're calling on these recommendations and to read them in more detail and also this, the supporting evidence in the background. So despite the uh, difficulties we've all been through uh, over the last 18 months or so uh, and the impact that COVID's had on lung cancer, we really do believe we can get back on track and that we can achieve our ambition of 25 by 25. Uh, and we very much hope that the recommendations that we're putting forward in this new UK Lung Cancer Coalition report will help um, doctors and policy makers and commissioners uh, and governments uh, see what is necessary in order to, to drive these forward so that we can, uh, you know, have some of the best outcomes for lung cancer uh, in the world. Uh, we, we really do believe we can fix this problem. 